So we mentioned this a few times right now. We're following this new escalation possibly out of Beijing, China. Taiwan saying that Beijing has deployed nine aircraft into its air defense zone. This on the same day that Russia invaded Ukraine. That move prompting Taiwan to scramble its air force. Beijing, of course, claims Taiwan is a part of China. Uh, we're awaiting comment from the Pentagon. We'll get it to you as soon as we arrive here in America's newsroom with that further report. Until then, back to Ukraine and Dave. And now back to Ukraine, as you said, Bill, and the country's president tweeting about engaging Russian forces in the Chernobyl nuclear waste site. Russian occupation forces are trying to seize the Chernobyl NPP. Our defenders are giving their lives so that the tragedy of 1986 will not be repeated. Reported this to the Swedish Prime Minister. This is a declaration of war against the whole of Europe. Stephen Hadley is a former director of national security for President George W. Bush, and it's a really good good to, to see you, because this is quite a development, nice Steve. Here. And maybe take us to your thinking about President Putin's decision here to basically. It's not a minor incursion. He has invaded all of Ukraine. He has, and I think we have to take him at his word. He said he wanted to denazify, uh, denazification of Ukraine. That really means he wants to change the government to one that is pro-Russian. He says he wants to demilitarize the country. That means he really wants to pulverize its military forces. Uh, and he says he doesn't want to occupy it. But he certainly wants to change its direction, and he explicitly threatened that if anyone tries to intervene and stop him, they will uh, suffer severe consequences, which is really a threat of, uh, of nuclear use. I have to say we have to re re do it in that way. So I think he's been pretty clear about what he's doing. He wants Ukraine to be pro-Russia. He wants Ukraine to be part of the Russian sphere of influence. And what he'd really like is a confederation of Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine to be at the core of that sphere of influence. Well, this is about so, the restoration, not of the Soviet Union, but of the Russian Empire. Well, so you believe he wants the entire country, not just the eastern half or the southeastern half of Donbass? He wants to change the regime, and he wants to change the direction of the country from heading west to heading east and being part of the Russian sphere of influence. That's really what he wants. Yeah, how long do you believe Zelensky can hang on? I don't know. You know, the big uncertainty here is whether the Ukrainians will fight and whether they have the means to fight. A lot of people have said what we needed to do was try to make Ukraine a porcupine that would be very difficult for Putin to deal with. I think the question is really how long and how hard the Ukrainians will fight. And that, I think, is the, the biggest determiner here. If they do fight, we should help them in every way we can, supporting them militarily by, by arms and equipment, uh, diplomatically, economically. Uh, we want to raise the cost of this to Putin so that he will concede at some point that it's a strategic mistake. But on the other hand, if resistance collapses quickly within Ukraine, and he achieves his objectives, then uh, I'm afraid it's going to be a great triumph for Vladimir Putin. And then, Steve, what about, we, 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 we've, I think we've established what Putin wants, as you mentioned, it's not just the former Soviet Union, you say restoration of the, uh, the Russian Empire. What does Europe want, right? What do the, the NATO countries want? What are the people in the Baltic states thinking today as they stare down what's happening right now? They've got to be very scared and very concerned. You know, you may remember, Dana, when the Russians went into you, to Georgia in 2008, we all said, if we don't make, if we don't deny Putin his tactical objectives and make him pay a strategic cost, today it will be Georgia, tomorrow it will be Ukraine, and the day after that, it will be the Baltic states. So I think if you live in the Baltic states, you're very concerned tonight. And one of the things I'm worried about, and Putin hasn't talked about this, but, you know, Kaliningrad is detached from the rest of Russia by Belarus, but also by Poland and Lithuania. And my concern would be, for example, if Putin succeeds in what he's doing in Ukraine, he would be decided it's, 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 it would be great to connect Kaliningrad back up with Russia via Belarus. And that means taking territory from Poland and Lithuania. That means a threat to NATO, uh, invocation of Article 5, that means war. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a very serious moment for Europe, and I think they're increasingly seeing it in that way. Do you have a sense of what President Biden tells the world in two hours? 
He's going to, I think, try to rally the world uh, to support Ukraine to resist this Russian move. Uh, I think uh, if Putin succeeds, it's really going to change the map in Europe, change the security architecture. It's going to require a lot of reassurance of our friends and allies in Europe. That probably means more U.S. forces to Europe, probably in the tens of thousands. You know, if you step way back, we will then have a huge challenge for security in Europe. We, of course, have the challenge of dealing with China and a more aggressive China. And I think we'll have a challenge in the Middle East whether Iran gets into this uh, new, back into the nuclear agreement or not. This is a prescription for real overstretch. And uh, the United States is going to need all its friends of allies. And the United States is going to have to fix its problems and, uh, and unify up here at home. We've got a big task ahead of us. It's going to be a very challenging time. Steve, you mentioned China, and I did want to maybe get your take here on what possibly could be happening today. Taiwan is saying that Chinese planes are invade, invading their airspace, and that China says today they say Taiwan is not Ukraine, and this is happening on the very day. And you have to wonder if when Putin and Xi saw each other at the Olympics, if this was discussed? Don't know. Uh, you know, the Chinese have sent aircraft into the air defense identification zone of Taiwan continually now for, for several months. So this in itself is not new. I think China is watching very carefully whether uh, Putin is able to get away with what he's trying to do in Ukraine. They'll draw. Maybe that will be a, a, a game plan for them in terms of Taiwan. But I wouldn't expect anything on Taiwan in the near term. term. Uh, President Xi needs to get through this November meeting of the uh, of the Communist Party. Well, he will be given a third term, uh, either for five years or almost an indefinite third term. I think he wants to keep things pretty quiet between now and then. So I okay. think uh, it's unlikely that something will happen in Taiwan. But the issue for China really is, if 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 as I'm sure we will do, impose enormous sanctions on Russia. That's a dilemma for China. Russia will try to get China to help it circumvent or get around those sanctions. And if China does, it will further exacerbate relations between China and the United States. So I think China has to be thinking hard about how it's going to respond to this. Uh, they've, uh, they've criticized our sanctions, but they've also were clear that they're not in favor of invading neighboring states. That's contrary to a basic uh, Chinese principle of non-interference and respect mm -hmm. for sovereignty. So they've supported Russia's position that this is all about all America's fault. Uh, they've criticized our sanctions, but I think they're you got to be a little bit nervous about endorsing what Putin has done in terms of invading Ukraine. And I think they have some tough thinking to do about what they do when Putin asks for help to deal with the economic sanctions that are coming from the United States, Europe, and the UK. Steve Hadley, please don't be a stranger. We would love to see you again um, and your expertise and your insights. Very, very valuable to us. Thank you. Love to do it anytime. Thanks Thank for you, having sir. me. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.